Over the holidays, I was working on a project and went to turn on the dust collector and I heard a click and nothing happened. Hit the button again, heard a click and was then thinking, uh-oh, either this thing died or my dust collector blower died. I was way more worried about the dust collector blower because that's a big heavy motor and expensive and you know I didn't want that thing burning up so went and turned the circuit breaker off and then squeezed into where this was installed um, it's a woodcraft remote starter I bought it used for like 50 bucks a couple years ago it's been working great um, since I put the system in uh, it says it's a 220 volt 3 horsepower um, there is a circuit breaker on the top here that is a 15 amp circuit breaker. Um, you know, flip, it was not tripped. I flipped the switch on and off uh, to no avail, didn't change anything you know, after I turned the power back on. Um, you know, it's uh, got a 20 amp 220 plug. Uh, 20's got the one up one sideways one vertical um, 15 amp is if they're both sideways like this on the plug side and the, the receptacle side here on the bottom um, so I took it back down I plugged it into where my table saw plugs in so I got 220 right there and I stuck a meter on this end um, one side, you know, I pressed the button, heard a, the relay in there clicking. One side would stay on and one side would stay off. So obviously something in the relay got burned up. Um, I opened it up, I really couldn't see any, you know, physical damage, like the smoke got let out or anything like that. But it is not working. Uh, I went to Peachtree Woodworking Supply. There, I'm, I live in the Atlanta area, and bought another one of these. Uh, like I said, this one's Woodcraft, but the one from Peachtree looks exactly the same. Housing, you know, just this right here is different. It's a 220 volt, thir three horsepower. Um, uh, brought it home, you know, installed it, plugged it in, hit the button, and I heard the fan the Blower start to turn over, and then I heard a click. The circuit breaker flip tripped on it. Reset the circuit breaker, hit the button, started trip. Did it again. I tried two more times. Maybe I didn't, you know, I need to break it in, which was kind of stupid thinking. So. I took it off the wall and went ahead and plugged the blower straight into the plug and I've been operating it with a circuit breaker over in the panel but every time I flip it you can kind of hear that electrical hum sound when you start up something that is pulling a lot of amperage and I guess I don't know if that's really good for the circuit breaker to be tripping on and off to operate um, you know, that motor control. Um, so I took the one I bought from Petri Woodworking back, you know, just told him it wasn't working, you know, it says 223 horsepower, and left it at that. Went online, did some research, and saw a guy that had a pretty elegant solution, um, and I'm going to show you, I guess, my version of it. Uh, by the way, my distance from my panel to my dust collector is about 40 feet of wire. It's 12 gauge on a 20 amp circuit breaker and you know it's been handling fine. Uh, I think either this circuit breaker had a little more tolerance than the new one I bought. Um, I didn't want to try another one. It's just a pain in the butt getting into the tiny space where this sits and I figured I could probably build one for the same price, maybe a little bit less. Um, or if anything, it'll be a little more reliable with 
parts that can be interchanged in the event something does break. So uh, let me open what's in here and show you what we're going to do. First thing is this. This is a contactor. Uh, I got it off Amazon. It's ten dollars. It's a Packard C230B. And what makes this one unique is the coil on the bottom to, to operate the contacts operates off 120 volts AC. Um, typically you see these in the HVAC industry and they're a lower voltage AC like 24 or something like that. But this one will do 120 across these terminals to operate the coil. And obviously when the coil operates there's a spring holding it up when the coil activates it comes down it makes contact to allow power to go terminal to terminal across there so we can do 120 volts here 120 volts there to go start 240 so this was 10 bucks on Amazon to operate the coil we're going to use this outdoor lighting switch I got this at Lowe's for about ten dollars and it's just a basic on and off um, and it's got two plugs on the bottom you know one plug that'll get plugged into the wall um, what I plan to do is have this mounted externally of this box where this will be installed so I can run the 110 volts into the box and then have another 110 here for like a light or something I think just as an indicator that the system is running so as I said, this will be mounted outside uh, this box here. The other parts I picked up are um, a male and female 240 plug. Uh, these are because I am moving this a little further away from where the old one was mounted and just because it's in a tight space now. So I'm going to plug this into the wall, extend it over to this box, and then when the you know, contact's made, it's going to leave this box, and then this will plug in to the motor um, for the dust collector. So this will get mounted in the box in some sort of vertical fashion in here. I haven't figured that out yet. And then I got a little terminal block here, and what this is is um, just a piece of metal with some screw terminals that you can break out. So the plan with this is for the 240 coming in and out and the 110 coming in um, I'm going to terminate all those onto this block and then have on one side so it'll say come in on this far left turn terminate here and then inside the box will be on this right hand side these will go to all the different terminals um, in in the box because basically, so this will be you know wire coming in from the outside, you know a 12 gauge wire or something like that. It's flexible, and it'll plug into this side, and just, it just transfers from this side to this side, keeps on going. So, you know, of all these things, I think I got the receipt here. This was ten dollars. This was ten dollars. Um, the both of these were about, well, one was 11, one was 15. Um, this was 21, which I guess I could have made it out of plywood. Um, but, you know, I had some gift cards from Christmas. I think this was like $5. So we're probably near the range of buying one of those pre made dust collector boxes. But I think this is going to be. A more solid system and lasts a lot longer um, and can take a little bit more of that surge on the front end so um, let's just go to the next step and see how we're gonna lay this out all right let's dive into just kind of a little diagram on what's gonna happen here so I'm gonna use this green pen it's gonna represent our contactor here and it's got a you know, connector on each end 
which are the high voltage connectors. And then there's a connector on each side for that 120 volt. That'll be the coil. And I don't, I'm not an electrical engineer or an electrician. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing this at my own risk. You know, if you guys don't feel safe working with electricity, obviously hire a professional, but I've done a lot of my own electrical work. Um, I think I'm knowledgeable enough to do things for myself. And I'm just showing you what I did. So, so this will be the contactor. Um, we'll call you know, the paper the overall box or something. Um, and let's bring in our 240 volt. So 240 is really just two 120 legs. I was going to kind of just draw this logically. So those are going to come in from the outside. One's going to go to one side. And then the goal is to continue out the other side. So there's one leg. Here's the other leg coming in. It's the contactor goes out. We're going to say flowing in this direction. So this side is always hot. This will be um, we'll call this plug side from the wall. I'll call this dust collector. All right, so that's the goal. This thing is basically just a big, big switch. Um, additionally, we have the little wireless remote dealy over here. It's going to be on the outside. Um, you know, have your remote to click to that, and then it's bringing in 120. But with 120, we obviously we're not dealing with two hots like 240. We have a you know, a hot and a, a neutral. So we'll use these colors to represent that. Um, so obviously we'll call, call it orange hot. So hot and power is flowing this way. Obviously it comes into the thing. And we have a neutral line. Let's call it that. Um, so this basically, when this gets switched, you know, it'll switch the plugs on the end. So let's say we come out of this plug, bring the neutral to one side, and then the hot, I'll bring it over here, and it's going to connect to that. So when this gets energized right here, this allows power. To flow down. So that's pretty much the gist of it from a logical perspective. Alright, so I got everything assembled in here. Um, what you can see back here is the uh, little remote. And I got the remote control here. It's got plugged into power and it comes down here into the box um, and you'll see it Come over here, it's got a brown is hot and the blue is neutral. So we go to hot to one side of the solenoid and neutral to this side. And basically, I can use the remote. Here, click on, click off. So that works. Um, and then also what I did is brought in my, I guess, 240 volts on this side. Um, source is coming in on this side and then exiting on this side and going back out. And you can see where I have everything attached down here. Um, with it being 240, I wrapped the white wires with a black piece of tape so if someone, whoever opened this up, they could tell that both of these are going to be hot. Um, I've got my ends put on. I got the 20 amp 240 volt. So it's got the one sideways, one vertical. And basically, if the solenoid or the contact is off right now, and I have my multimeter set up here to do um, ohms and 
be audible, you know, if I have continuity. So basically what I can do is, I think I have the horizontal one here for the white. So that's that one. Now it's not coming to this side because it's not turned on. So this is the input side, this is the output side. And then the black is then this vertical. You can see that here. Then nothing on this side. Um, one thing you can see is down here, I did just loop the ground through from one to the other. So if I go on ground here, stick it in there, get a good contact ground goes through. So now if I come on this side, this one should be the black or white. Yeah, white. And then this guy will be the black. So now to test it, um, all I did basically was turn it on and these two should line up. So now if I click go in here, that's going through, nothing there, nothing there. Obviously there's no power through this because this is the input and the output, so I, you know, only power is on these two lines right now. And I can test this side. No continuity. So I can come down here, here's the output on that. So if I leave that on there and I turn it off, goes off, on, off. So I think we are ready to mount this up. So the next step will be you know, putting the top one here and then going and running these lines and plugging the controller here into a power source. So let's go do that next. All right, well, we've got everything hooked up. Uh, I've got the box mounted up here on the wall, and the power for the coil, um, I haven't run a power outlet right here yet that's going to be for the bandsaw in this, so I just kind of ran it temporarily over here to my networking area of the shop. And I don't know if you can see, the two cords coming out of the top are heading back there to the plug for the dust collector and the actual power connector that goes to the outside where the dust collector is. Um, everything's turned on. Um, I'm just going to give it a shot and see what happens. Worked great. Um, you know, I think this is going to be nice because A, like I was telling you earlier, this is a ten dollar piece of hardware that if this remote goes bad I can go buy another one and just plug it in. Um, also the other main component the contactor in there was ten dollars and you know is a replaceable item especially with the little crimp one connectors and everything. Um, you know if you guys have any questions on how I assembled this, how much it costs, I mean like I said it was ten bucks for the two major pieces you could build this out of plywood. I mean, the ends for the 240 volts were like 10 bucks a piece, so 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 bucks really in parts. I had the wire on hand, the 12 gauge wire. You know, you're probably $50 in parts even if you had to buy the wire. So, you know, leave me a comment, any suggestions, anything else you'd like to see, subscribe. I don't put out many videos, but I think I enjoy putting on more of these shop videos because I haven't turned out a woodworking video yet. Maybe one day. But thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you later.